think it's a mixture of things for different people. So when I was a student, it was very different to what it is now. When I started at university back in 2008, um, it was a BCU, so it was a similar sort of experience, but it was a much smaller campus, a much smaller community of people, and much smaller class sizes. So I think now it can be quite a daunting experience in many ways. So BC is the second biggest university and the second biggest city in the country. So it's, it's a big place, we've got lots of different campuses around the city. It can be incredibly daunting for a lot of people, but still incredibly different for a lot of people. We've got a huge number of students that aren't commuter students, they live on campus. Um, and for those students, it's a massive shift. It's, it's really different from the high school and the college setups that they know, not only a different way of learning and a different way of getting involved in, in what's happening on campus, but also a very different city in some cases, in some cases a different country. So I think a lot of people that are scared in their first year will go out in their third year a different person um, and a far more confident person and a person who has got a lot more about them than when they joined. BCUSU, which is the student union at BCU, offers um, quite a specific type of, of student union experience. So whilst a lot of unions are quite political, we did a strategic plan based on um, a survey that we did with students a few years back, um, which said they're more interested in things like employability, um, an academic voice and the union being able to, to portray their feelings to the university. Um, and also a sense of belonging as well, so they feel like they're part of the community rather than just a political union that focuses on alcohol and things like that. And like I said earlier, you know, we've got a lot of students from a lot of different backgrounds here. We've got a lot of international students that don't drink, so it would be irresponsible, obviously, as a union to just promote a drinking culture. And we also offer an advice service as well. We offer a separate um, advice service to that, which deals a lot with homes, with finances, um, and maybe some of the things that the university don't touch upon in their remit. So if you've got um, something that is bothering you from an academic perspective, that might be um, extenuating circumstances, it might be you've got an issue with um, some marking that's been done. We've got a separate advice team at the university who are completely independent, who are in no way sort of tied to the university decision making process, um, who are trained to offer you advice in those circumstances. Um, obviously there's the entertainment side as well, that chance to go out and enjoy yourself, it gives them that chance to have the social life they wanted or they had before whilst they're at university, so it's sort of Bridges that gap almost, so if they play football at home, there's still a chance for them to play competitive football at university and things like that. I think societies, again, mean different things to different people. So for some people, especially the sports teams that we've got, it's very much um, that competitive streak. So a lot of the sports teams that we have are made up of people who've maybe played sports at home or played sport competitively in other ways. Um, and this is kind of their avenue whilst they're at university to be able to do that at a similar sort of level. It's also a way for people that have always had an interest in sports to be able to, to join in and be able to sort of on a similar plateau to those people, which means they go along and just get involved and have fun. But there are a lot of students who have a lot of interest and a lot of things they want to say, and actually societies tend to be a way that they can do that, a way they can have a voice and a way that they can say, look, this is what we're interested in, this is what we want to talk about and educate other students about. Societies range from academic societies that help support students on courses, um, through to uh, the Disney Society, through to uh, performance societies like burlesque and yoga and dance, um, there's media groups, there's a whole range of societies for different things. Some students use those as a way to extend what they're doing academically, um, so it's very much a, a peer support thing, so students will help students who maybe are not struggling necessarily, but finding elements of their course difficult, or it's a way to sit down and talk about assignments that you maybe can't do in class. Um, through to students that start societies just because they have an interest in something. At the moment, nearly 130 societies and sports teams in existence. Some of our societies do some amazing things, some really amazing things. Um, they clean up canals, they do events for students, they do multicultural events, they do some brilliant things that, as a union, we just don't have the people power staff-wise to do. In down what a society means to a student is quite a difficult question because to every student, every society means a different thing. But I think it's just a way for them to express themselves, to get together with people socially in a way they maybe can't do, to bridge that gap and make it a little bit easier to transition from one to the other. Um, and certainly from a sports team's point of view, to be able to compete, to be able to enjoy the sport that they love and hopefully develop. There's, I mean, the specific societies that look after that, the Student Mind Societies, uh, the Mental Health Society, I think those as individual societies play a huge part in that. Um, they're also linked quite closely with the university's mental health provision as well, so that's students uh, working with the university and union staff to develop mental health awareness at the university. I think nationally it's, it's something we don't talk about enough and something that is not taboo necessarily anymore but it's not as sort of easy to discuss as it would be, you know, we've always said if you break your arm you quite happily go to the doctor but you wouldn't necessarily talk to somebody about the fact that you had a, or you felt you had a problem with your mental health. I like to think that other societies that maybe don't focus around that just give people 
that sense of belonging and that sense of freedom almost. It's not a radical change in some ways, but it's enough of a change to, to spark off potential mental health issues. The societies that we have give sort of a pathway for students to have, even if it's just a breather from academic life, it just takes their mindset away from something, or it could be going back to the idea of the Disney Society, it could just be something they really love, that suddenly they find they've spent two hours talking about Disney to somebody, and actually that's just brought them back up from what could potentially have been a, a bit of a low. I don't know if necessarily they all directly contribute to that, but I'd like to think they all play their part in that. In first year, I was walking around Precious Fair and I saw this table full of like knitted things like flowers and crafty brooches and stuff and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> it's alright on my street. And then I saw the name and it was Crafty Bitches. I was like, this is even more on my street. I'm signing up for this. It's we sort of craft society where mostly we knit. For the first few weeks we teach everyone how to knit. And then we have all these patterns every week and make different things, but we also bring in other crafts like embroidery or like paper crafts, origami and stuff like that. And we have like themed sessions like Chinese New Year, Valentine's Day, Saturday's Day, stuff like that. Um, so anything crafty we're all over it. <laughs> well, there's not really many societies that are like us because I think most of the societies here at BCU they're all focused on sports. In comparison there's not very many that are not sports and fits and we're very relaxed and we just sit around just talking and crafting and knitting and stuff like that. So for people who can't run a mile in 10 minutes we just like to sit around, have a little bitch, as is our name. I think, yeah, it's definitely changed. Not who I am, but how I think and how I spend my free time. It's given me a lot of opportunities that I wouldn't have otherwise had if it didn't join a society. Like last year we were part of an exhibition. And I've worked with people that I wouldn't have met if I didn't join a society. I think definitely should create a society if you have a good idea. If not, then join one because it's just nice. You can have somewhere else to go that isn't part of your course and not think about anything else. Um, I was looking at all the different societies and just the name kind of drew me in. I did card making in my spare time at home. Origami is a little habit of mine and knitting my nan taught me. So when I saw the name Crafty Witch, I was like, oh, that's a great name. What's this all about? And I came, I loved it, and I signed up. Well, some of the girls are my course um, L5s and L6s, so they've kind of given me a little insight of what's to come. I was able to get some tips and pointers. I actually doing society that I learned some knitting tricks I didn't know, and I taught them some origami they didn't we know. Did yeah, um, we're Crafty Bitches, it's a lovely little community. We sit in the cafe, socialise, it's like your own little mini families for each section. It just kind of breaks away from what you're doing on your courses, it gives you that fresh mind when you go back to your course, that's how I find it. What I would say is even if all you're doing is making you know, an hour of your time free every week or something like that to get involved with the society, the difference it can make to have that hour not thinking about an assignment, not thinking about a lecture, not thinking, whatever it might be, and to have so, almost some you time, if you like, is ridiculously beneficial. And I think the university would, would agree as well that it's incredibly important to have that work-life balance. You're probably fine with the exams as well. It gets to the point where you've done so much work, you just become completely unproductive. The important thing is to know when that point's coming and to say, right, you know what, I'm now going to go off and I'm going to play football or I'm going to go and sit and talk to the Creative Society about some projects they're doing. There are a lot of like-minded people that want to embrace you and get you involved and help you to do stuff that you really want to do. If it's something that you're passionate about, absolutely get involved with it. If it's something that you're passionate about that doesn't exist, you can quite easily make a society.